I'm filming this clip in the off chance that this entire stack falls over because I think it might. It's not very structurally sound. And in case I don't have a chance to take a thumbnail here or film in front of it, I want to show you. I'm trying to give it some support, but you can clearly see that it's it's bending. <laughs> so I'm going to go get my makeup and hair ready to film and hopefully this is here when I come back. Oh my gosh, it stayed. Okay. Hello friends, I'm Kayla. This is my year end wrap up. Everything that I read, we talk about stats, we talk about ratings, we do an overview of everything that I read, when I read it, what I thought of it. Inevitably every year some comments come in that are like, but you didn't tell us every title of every book you read, so I'm sorry if the title of this video misled you. But what I'm gonna do for you is I'm going to link down below an unlisted video that I'm gonna film right now where I just list every single title. So if that's what you're looking for, then it, it does exist. I feel like those comments usually come in from people who don't typically watch booktube. So if you're if you're new to the community, hello. I do a monthly wrap up where I do talk about every single book, review every single book, give my ratings. And then I also do a lot of fun, stupid other videos here that you might enjoy. So also down below will be a link to a playlist I've created of where I think you should start with my channel. Um, but overall this year in 2021, I read 181 books. They're all behind me except for I think three that I'm missing. This 181 happened across 12 very different months. So I'm going to show you what it looks like if I divide it into when I read them. There were some months where I read seven books. Uh, hello March, what happened there? And some that I read 26 books, which is the very next month in April. Um, it was a lot dependent on when I was filming. So like in January, April and September, for example, I featured a lot of childhood rereads because I do a video series where I reread my favorite books. Obviously those are shorter, those are easier reads. So I typically read a lot more in those months. And then like in November, I had a Goodreads video where I read all of the horror nominees. But a normal month for me is between like 11 and 16, which you see evident in about half the months of the year. My worst reading months overall were July and September, where I practically had no no five stars or new favorite books. It was a dry, dry summer. And then my best reading months were actually the last two months. So November and December where um, my enjoyment really picked up. They each had about four five star reads when a normal month for me typically lately has like two or three. And overall that means I had about 35 star reads this year. So I'll flash them all on the screen right now so you can check them all out. And since we're talking about ratings, the first thing I'm gonna do is take down this stack and organize it by rating. So I rate books from one to five stars, but what I like to do in this video is divide it into three different sections. So books that I didn't like, books that I liked, and books that I loved. So in the left stack, you'll see one and two stars. Maybe I'll go up to like two, things that got two and a half. Uh, the middle stack will be typically three and four stars, and the final stack on the right will be four and a half to five stars because I do give out a good amount of four and a halves. I know I'm a little short down here, but I was really excited to, oh, now the sun's just gonna attack me. I recently took the photos off my wall and repainted this wall and I was like, this is the perfect scenario to film this because I can actually make the stacks tall enough and there's not things cluttering the background. Because if you've watched all of these, Sometimes my stacks are three wide and sometimes they're two wide and then you can't really tell which has more in it. So here are the three stacks. Didn't love, liked, and loved. And they're actually pretty even. So it rounds out to being 33% of my reads, exactly one third of my reads this year were four and a half and five stars. Clearly a little under a third and a little more than a third were dislikes and likes. So in addition to showing you all of my five stars, I'm also gonna do a flat lay of all of my four and a halves so you can see all of those. Side note, I didn't include any of my childhood rereads or the rereads that like I knew were gonna be five stars. These are new five star reads for me and new two star reads for me. So there's about 30 bucks to the side that I don't rate. And then if you're interested in hearing all about my least favorites, I have a video for that. If you want to know my top 10 favorites, I have a video for that. And then here's a little pie chart just showing you what you can already see in the background. 
but like I'm never gonna pass up an opportunity to make a pie chart. Speaking of rereading, that actually made up 23% of my reading this year. Some I haven't reread since seventh grade, some I haven't reread until this time last year, some it's been like 10 years. My least successful rereads would probably be This Is Where I Leave You and Hopeless, which drastically changed in rating. And then my most successful rereads, as always, is the Raven Cycle and then this year the Georgia Nicholson series and also Are You There God It's Me Margaret but then also this morning I finished my reread of A Song of Race and Ruin. After being disappointed by the sequel I was questioning this book and the reread was perfection. Then there were some books that were just interesting to reread and getting to have conversations uh, in various videos was really fun. So like 21 Balloons and Monster and Tuck Everlasting. So speaking about childhood books I'm going to organize next by intended age range. So on the left you'll see middle grade and children's, in the middle is young adult, and on the right is general or adult books. According to my notes that I added up all of these things last night, 60% of my reads are adult, but seeing them here I don't know if that feels accurate, but it is because I, I added them all. 60% adult, 20% we're a little over 20% teen and under 20% middle grade, but those are pretty similar. So it's 60, 40. And we can all say thank you to the sun for uh, leaving me alone. But that also means it's kind of on its way to setting. So we're gonna hurry up and organize it in some other ways. I can't believe I'm only in the second organization. I think that these numbers are just really indicative of my content. It fits with the trends of the videos that I make. It seems these days that the YA that I do pick up it's not a ton and like as we go forward it's not going to be well very much at all um but it's going to be typically authors that i just already have an established love for i don't think picking up new ya authors is really a journey that i'm going to continue on but occasionally picking up one of my favorite authors new things in this age range I'm still down for. So on that topic, the next way I'm gonna organize it is authors that I've read from before versus authors that I read for the first time in 2021. Every year it's a pretty even split, so it seems like a silly stat to include, but I just always find it interesting, like the authors that I've discovered versus ones that I'm comfortable with and I'm picking up again. So last year was 55-45. This year it's exactly 50%. It is, well, I guess I read 181 books, so technically there's one number off, but the percentage is 50-50, which I think is cool. Um, and we do have to factor in that 23% of my reading was rereads, so it's not just that I was reading the author again, but I was reading the same thing I've already read from them. So obviously we have the stack of ones that I just read for the first time, and then of the stack of ones that I'm reading before, only half of those are books that I'm, I picked up because I wanted to read that author for another time. It probably doesn't look perfectly even because some books are obviously thicker than others, but I'm always happy with this number. I think it's a good amount of retrying out my favorite authors and then also picking up new people. A lot of these happen when I do like random videos where random things choose my TBR. And though it's not always successful, I do think it's it's nice to have that many new authors coming into my life. So here's a photo that's showing you my new favorite author kind of discoveries this year. Because of various experimental videos I did, I got introduced to Eden Robinson, Latanya McQueen, Gus Marino, Catherine M. Valenti, C.L. Polk, and Selena Godin. And then some authors that have been on my TBR for a while that I was excited to get around to and I want to read more from include Alyssa Cole, Helen Phillips, Rachel Eve Moulton and Nafisa Asad. And then because I saw them on booktube, I read Ashley Winstead and Lane Fargo for the first time. So I'm actually anticipating reading from them. And then authors that I read again, that either I have a new favorite from that author now, or they've solidified themselves as a favorite, include Mary Kubica. I've been reading her forever and I have a new favorite from her. I have a new favorite, Stephen Graham Jones, who is an all time favorite author now. I have a new favorite B.A. Paris, I found a new favorite Brandy Colbert, and a new favorite Sylvia Marino Garcia, all from a series of videos I do called Third Time's a Charm, where this time around I read authors for the third time that I previously disliked two books from, so it was nice getting to give them another go and ending up with some new favorites from those three. Also in post, upon editing, I want to figure out the percentages of ratings because I'm just interested to know of the authors that I was reading again because when I look at this stack I actually see a lot of flops um, so I wonder if 
the new things that I read from authors that I love if they were hits or if I had more hits with authors that I'd never read from before because I do see a lot of flops in here too and I feel like probably more but um, I'm gonna pop up a little pie chart just comparing like books that I actively disliked versus books that I loved. So the middle ground like three and four stars aren't going to be here but I want to see like were there a lot of misses or a lot of wins. As far as authors I read from the most this year I obviously read 10 Louise Renison books um, but I also read five from Maggie Stiefvater and three from Okwake Amezi and then a whole bunch of authors that I read two books from but the majority I read just one book from this year. I meant to talk about this in my rating section but since I just brought it back to ratings for a second I thought I would talk about my average rating for the year which is unfortunately a 3.6. It's not the worst rating. I've seen a lot of my friends with a, a lot lower ratings this year, but I've talked about before that my average rating is always a 3.7. For the first like five years of my channel, it was a 3.7, it was consistent. Last year it was a 3.8. And that was a big deal for me, that extra point percent, because last year really felt like my reading year. It was incredible, I read so many amazing things, and it's weird how I can feel so much better about my reading, and it barely makes a difference to my average rating. And so it seems like going from a typical 3.7 to a 3.6 doesn't seem like that drastic, but it is. I have read so many books that I absolutely hated this year, more than I feel like I normally do. Though we did look at the stacks and we saw a lot of five stars that especially came in at the end of the year. Just overall, and looking at an overview, though I read two books this year, um, House of Leaves and My Heart is a Chainsaw, that are going into my favorite books of all time list, overall, this was my worst reading year absolutely ever. <laughs> but what it did for me is, as always, I get more and more in tune with my reading and what I like and what I don't like. And if I actually take that forward with me this time and read things that I think that I will love the majority of the time, it can only go up from here. So crossing our fingers to get back to a 3.7 or hopefully above next year. Also, since we're talking about authors reading for the first time and otherwise, I thought I would show you a picture of my top 10, just because I think it's really fascinating that only one author in that entire top 10 was an author I was reading from again. Nine out of 10 of my top 10 were my very first experience with that author, and I just think that's awesome. So now we know how many books that I read, but we haven't talked about how many pages I've read because I don't actually know. But we're gonna figure it out together, first by organizing by size of book. So we're going to have a stack that is books under, let's say 200 pages, books from 200 to 400 pages, and then anything over 400 will be in the stack on the right. So clearly the stack in the middle that is 250 to 400 pages is the biggest. I feel like the average book that I pick up, technically the average size book, like if you actually put all the numbers together, it's like 316 pages but the majority of books I pick up are like 360 pages. In total the books combined equal 57,000 pages give or take which means I read approximately 156 pages a day. That's not true because I don't read every day and so the days I do read I end up reading like twice that. I basically read a full book every two days if you look at the technical numbers but I pretty much, if I am reading, I'm reading, I'm completing a book a day right now. That's the trend with my reading. The longest book I read this year, you can see right there, coming in at 992 exhausting pages is XX by Ryan Hughes. The shortest book I read this year, only slightly smaller <laughs> than XX, is Sleepover Friends book number five, Lauren's Big Mix-Up, coming in at 75 pages. I had no goal with my reading this year, Actually, I had no goals with any of my reading this year, but in past years it has been to read shorter books because I think I enjoy shorter books more. Without it being my goal, I still read a good chunk of under 250 page books, but my average book size is definitely bigger than it was last year. But I still think it's shorter than like the average year for me prior to last year. And there's definitely trends with the genres of books and what size they are. There's a certain type of book I read that is this big, a certain type of book I read that's this big. So uh, for genre, let's organize that way. I struggle with this every single year because a lot of the books that I read don't fit into just one thing. So I like to do um, it like a, like a chart of 
I go from most realistic to least realistic starting out with non-fiction stuff, going to general fiction, realistic fiction, contemporary, etc. Then it moves into mystery thrillers, and then this entire other side is speculative. So it's really light fantasy, it's high fantasy, sci-fi, and horror is all over here. Though like some horror is realistic fiction. So my whole organization doesn't make total sense, but it is organized by genre at this point. And then I don't know where they belong, but I have some short story collections, a poetry collection, a play, a graphic novel. And overall, the biggest numbers work out to 15% realistic fiction, 15% fantasy, 14% horror. I read 13% mystery thrillers, and then obviously all the rest of the numbers are just generally smaller. Definitely more horror this year than normal. I think I read more and more sci-fi every year. I think fantasy is actually usually a larger chunk than what I read this year. But the thing about my 23% rereads is most of that was contemporary and realistic. So if we didn't factor that stuff in, like just like I've left out my childhood rereads from a lot of categories, if I left it out of this one, all of the stats would be so different. As far as the success of all of these genres, um, I read a lot more sci-fi and it was not the most successful for that. Um, I read quite a few fantasy series. So these are all the books I read this year that are a part of a series. So the top row is series that I read one book from and I will continue on into, probably. The second row is book series that I read one book from that I probably won't continue in. The third row is series that I was reading beyond the first book. So like The Sister of the Traveling Pants and Dune, I both read the first book and the sequel and then the other three in that row are sequels that I was reading. And then the bottom row is series that I read to completion this year. So I read the entirety of one duology, one four book series, and one ten book series. And then as far as release year, I don't really want to organize it by that because I, I'm just done moving all these books around. You don't need to see this number because again, it is a perfect split. It's 50-50, 2021 releases, and then anything else. And that stat is pretty much the same every single year. I read half like brand new things I'm excited about and half of my reading is older things that are off my TBR or they come up in videos or again they're the rereads. And then also I like doing a chart that shows you where the books came from. So obviously all of the 2021 releases I bought like I added to my book collection in 2021. This is the number of books that were either sent to me as far as arcs or gifts or I stole from my mom's bookshelf or were library books. This is the number of books that I picked up this year that had already come out so I probably got them for videos or I was just interested in them and then this percentage this percentage is the books that I read off of my already established shelf that I already owned a physical copy of this should be higher um but that's just that's the life that we're living at this rate I will never get through my entire TBR so do better next year Okay, pause. Upon editing, I just realized when we're looking at the graph, it doesn't look that bad. So when I say that like, oh, I should have read more things off my TBR, upon editing, I'm realizing that it looks like I read a ton. But when I said that 23% of my reads was rereads, that is 43 books. So 43 of this 52 that I'm showing you here was rereads. So really only somewhere between like 10 and 20 books off of my already established TBR actually got read. This graph makes it look better than it really was. But um, please continue past Kayla. And then let's talk about things on covers just because I think it's fun and I like to organize by different colors. So starting out, these are all of the red books I read. These are all of the orange and brown and yellow books I read. Here's the green ones, here's the in-between greeny blue ones, a lot of blue books as always, purple books, pink books, uh, books with too many colors to categorize, and books with not enough colors to categorize. Was that fun? <laughs> then we'll do elements on covers because I also think it's fun to look at book covers and what's popping up. So as expected, the most popular cover trend is just faces. So 35% of the books that I read have people on the cover. 10% had flowers or foliage. Another 10% had an animal on the cover. And then my favorite one is another 10% 
of the books that I read had houses on the cover. So I feel like this is a newer trend that I'm seeing in the books I pick up, a spooky house or some kind of building maybe in the background of the cover. I of course found a couple covers with hands, uh, a few with skulls or skeletons, and then three with a bridge. And I just felt like it was worth noting. And then looking at titles, these are the most popular words that show up in the book titles that I pick up. I just like thinking about title trends or maybe if there's something that I'm gravitating towards. Apparently the most popular word in a title was love. Uh, there's quite a few books that I picked up with love in the title. The next most common one is one or ones. Also night. I thought it was a lot more popular but I only picked out five. Um, and then something about death. So dying, dead, die, that's on five of them as well. And then I asked you last year if there's any other stats you want included. So one of them I can't really give you and that is the medium in which I consumed the book. I would say 99% of the books that I read I have a physical copy and I read the physical copy um, but I have purchased like 50 audiobooks this year or borrowed them what have you but it's just it's not very common for me to read the entirety of a book via audio so it's always the physical book or a mix and I think that pretty much covers it those are all the stats that I wanted to share that I typically share at the end of the year. I have a couple other videos you might be interested in like a reading survey where I just answer a whole bunch of questions about my year of reading. Some like superlatives for various books and categories. And then coming up soon, I will link it down below once it's live, is my most anticipated reads of 2022. So if you're interested to see where my reading is going, this is coming. And that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here for this year of reading and content and everything. If you want to join my channel membership, we're doing some fun things over there, some more wrap ups and discussions about my reading. And I will leave that link down below. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.